Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, so in this lecture, we're going to touch on a concept that we've already kind of alluded to a little bit, the concept of reflection. And I want to go a little bit more into the mechanism of reflection and how it works and how it applies to not only the very basics of what we've talked about, but also to the products we're going to use in the future and that we're using currently if you're working in the dispensary now and uh, you know also understanding some of the materials and the lens products that we're going to be using and how reflection uh, kind of relates to that now to this point we've talked about reflection in the sense of being the secondary luminous source in our environment right light shines on the objects they reflect to us and then our eye processes that visual information. That's still in play here. However, I wanna talk about reflection in the sense of how it reflects, okay? So let's jump into this a little bit. So the law of reflection, all right? That's the first thing I wanna talk about. So the angle of reflection, all right? The angle at which light reflects off of it is equal to the angle of incidence. Okay, so quick diagram here of what this means. If we could just pull out the pen here. The, you know, this is the concept is that if you have a reflective surface and this here is considered the normal, meaning just a imaginary vertical line. The angle at which a light ray comes in, so that's the angle of incidence and it hits the reflective surface, bounces back at the exact same angle. So this angle and this angle are equal. Okay, that's as simple as what you need to know about the law of reflection. Uh, angle of reflection is equal to angle of, uh, of incidence. This is a common way that people depict it. So the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That's simple, all right? We're not calculating anything here. We're just understanding a mathematical or physical pr a principle that applies in the world, all right? So when rays of light strike a rough surface, however, like concrete, uh, the uneven surface will disperse the light in every direction so this is called diffuse reflection all right so here's an example of diffuse reflection you've got yourself a really rough surface and then you've got all of these different surfaces where light can bounce off of right i'm going to highlight these guys so you have here and it's bouncing this way you have here and it's bouncing that way and so on and so forth the angle of uh, sorry, the law of reflection still applies here. However, the surface is so uh, uneven and all over the place that it's treating light differently on every single surface that it's hitting. All right, so light can scatter all over the place. And this is actually the way that most objects are illuminated in our environment. They are scattering light all over the place depending on the their shape, their, their structure, uh, everything, right? So, and this is where, you know, when you're looking at your environment, you're getting shadowing, you're getting different things, you're getting glare because the different surfaces are reflecting, reflecting light differently. On the other token, when light strikes a smooth and shiny surface like glass or a mirror, the surface reflects an, an image of the source. All right. So this is known as specular reflection. And I'll show you a diagram of that. Nice flat surface. Everything's bouncing the same way. So you don't get all this weird diffuse light and all this scattering and, dis and, and dispersion. You actually get a perfect mirror image of what's going on, all right? So this is the difference between all regular objects and reflective objects like mirrors and glass, all right? So all transparent materials, including lenses, okay, that, that's going to be the main stuff that we're going to be dealing with, they do reflect a certain amount of light. Now, we're going to start talking in the next lecture about refraction, about the bending of light, and that's what lenses are ultimately used to do. But I want you to understand that even if a refractive lens is being used, there is a certain portion of light that is being reflected. So the refraction of incident light 
uh, reflect, uh, sorry, reflected from a surface is referred to, sorry, the fraction of incident light ref reflected from a surface is called the reflectance. And it can actually be calculated with the Fresnel formula. All right, so look at this. This is gonna be the first formula we encounter together. And this is the Fresnel formula, all right? So the P here, if I can get my little guy to work here. So the P here, that is reflectance. And N, we haven't talked about this yet, but that is refractive index. We're jumping ahead a little bit in this. However, it's okay because we can basically kind of just get through this real quick and then we'll understand it more. The beauty of this is that I don't expect you to calculate. You never calculate reflectance, all right? This is not something that you're gonna be sitting in the lab calculating what the reflective mirror, uh, what, what the reflectance is of particular lens materials. However, I am about to show you how it's calculated and what it means. And again, this is conceptual because I want you to understand why we use things like anti-reflective coatings and why certain lenses need it and others don't necessarily. This is an concept. So let's calculate the reflectance of the following materials, all right? So we've got common lens materials here, okay? So we haven't touched on products, but I, I'm usually under the general you know, assumption that you're already working in the field and you understand some of this stuff. So CR39, uh, your standard plastic, polycarbonate, which is very commonly used. You've got 167 index and you have 174 index. All right, these are the most commonly used plastics in the dispensary. If you're completely new to this, these might seem foreign. However, most of you won't be. So let's just kind of go through one by one. Again, the math here is not super important, but if we look at the way that this Fresnel equation kind of you know, lines up here. I'm just plugging in the numbers. So you have the refractive index minus one, refractive index plus one, whole thing is calculated, then squared. And here is kind of how it works out. And we can calculate that you have a 4% reflectance. All right. Now, I don't know if you, you know, if you've kind of clued into this, but as the refractive index of the material, right? So you'll notice that I've kind of, you know, polycarbonate is 159, so a little bit higher than the CR39 at 1.523, then the 167 is higher and the 174. The reflectance will increase. So here we have a reflectance of 5%, and here we have a reflectance of 6%, and then we have a reflectance of, here it comes, you guessed it, seven percent all right so notice how the reflect the reflectance is increasing as the refractive index goes up all right so why do i want you to know this well again we're going to start talking about ref refractive lenses about how they bend light and how they contribute to correcting visual er refractive error and you know correcting vision However, it's important to realize that not all the light is going to be refracted. And this is actually probably going to be one of the last times we talk about this concept of reflectance. But I want you to have it in the back of your mind, knowing that there is a certain percentage of light that isn't passing through the material. It's actually being reflected away. Also, when we start talking about different products, you're going to start, we're going to start talking about things like anti-reflective coating, AR or ARC. All right. Now you should be able to see why ARC is important on higher index materials, right? So high index does require anti-reflective coating because the reflectance is much higher. As a matter of fact, you would be quite hard pressed to find certain materials at the lab or at the distributor and where you're buying your lenses being sold to you without anti-reflective coating when they are of higher index. Now, CR39 polycarbonate, uh, and in some cases, high index materials can be purchased without anti-reflective coating. However, mo for the most part, 167, 174 is always distributed with anti-reflective coating, and it's because of P, which is reflectance, all right? And that's pretty much all we need to know about reflection in the sense of lens materials. We also have to understand that reflection is important in the whole idea of, you know, our, our environment and why we actually see things, but it's not going to be critical to understand all the different calculations in this particular case as much as it is important to understand the principle. All right. So how does this play? Well, 
one of the most basic laws of optics. All right, and you know, if you want, if you want to feel good about yourself and say I I know a law of physics, well, the law of reflection, angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Right, we'll write it down again. I is equal to R. Very simple concept, and it does help explain a lot of what goes on around us. Uh, understand that rays of light either reflect, refract, or absorb. Okay, we've just talked about this, and we're about to talk about this, and this is less important in our world. However, it is the reason why um, certain colors do appear the way they do, because the colors of white light that we see are being reflected. The colors that we don't see are being absorbed. Right? As simple as that. Uh, reflection is the basic principle behind why objects are visible to us. We've talked about this repeatedly, and I think that you should probably have a pretty good grasp on it now. And reflectance allows us to understand that refractive lenses also reflect a percentage of light, which again is P again, and it allows us to understand why uh, anti-reflective coating that we're going to talk about in the future is important. And it also helps us understand that not everything is perfect, right? So <clears throat> even though we're using pretty modern and technologically advanced products, not all the light is going to be passing through it. So there is that. All right. I think that does it for you know reflection. And we can move on to, to refraction now, something that's going to be even more useful in our arsenal.